All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon for some uh, this afternoon for some sales management success tips and an exciting program that uh, I'm going to introduce here today. Um, I want to welcome you first of all, and I'm excited, very excited to bring this to you, based on my experience, which I'll share in just a moment here, and my education and um, kind of the school of hard knocks, uh, mostly the three and a half decades of of uh, being in the sales space and sales management space. So let's go ahead and get, get right to it and uh, start sharing with you some data that you may or may not know, but uh, definitely refresh your course. And then uh, again, we'll go from there. All right, so we've got uh, our philosophy here at uh, Eric Lawfoam International is CSI stands for Continuous Sales Improvement. And here's, here's the book. This book uh, is going to be available on Amazon this month. It's Eric is a, a well-known international best-selling author, Amazon best-selling author, and this is his uh, signature book. This one is picked up by uh, Morgan James, a major publishing house, and it's ex we're excited about it um, because it's got years and years of experience, uh, tremendous stories in here from some well-known people. Uh, very, very exciting. This will be available on Amazon in paperback. Right now, it's available on Kindle, but it's going to be available on paperback. I got an advanced copy. Uh, but this uh, this month here, later this month, I believe October 26th, uh, you'll be able to look for it and get a copy of it. That's our philosophy, continuous sales improvement. For me, that has been transformational. Um, I started off in the restaurant business way back. Uh, I grew up in the restaurant business and uh, I was family-owned business that was flipping hamburgers at seven years old. They used to turn over milk crates so I could be high enough to reach the grill to flip the hamburgers. Uh, looking back, it's pretty funny. Back then, as a family-owned uh, situation, so it worked out. And then by the time I was 15, I was a shift manager, coming home every day after school, going to work. Uh, by the time I graduated, I was a store manager. And I stayed there for about eight more years, uh, almost, a little bit less than that, And uh, before I got into the sales space. And the sales space is what uh, changed my outlook on management, changed my outlook on, on uh, sales, changed my outlook on what's possible and that's where the continuous sales improvement started. Transformational for me, took me from cook to coach to, to international trainer. And it's exciting, um, the, the process that happened, because in the restaurant business, conventional management, management regulates. It wasn't until I got into sales and started growing that I realized that management regulates, but leadership inspires and motivates. So I learned how to manage through leadership embracing the talents and strengths of the people that work with me. So this is, this is me, obviously you see me right here. Um, what we want to do is maximize the results and capitalize on all the opportunities that are available to you through your sales force, through your people, through your business. Um, again, this is me, 35 years sales, uh, 25 in management. I've logged over 50,000 hours of sales training conversation. I've trained the top earners, uh, six and seven figure earners in two different sales industries. Um, the, um, uh, the opportunity to do that in five different countries, four different languages was uh, amazing to me. I'm a current podcast host uh, for Manager's Best Practice. And you can reach out to me to find out more about that. Uh, but the Manager's Best Practice podcast is, uh, is awesome. And it's growing, the, the audience is growing. And it's a great way it's a great resource for managers to get information, knowledge, uh, be up to date on the best practices. Because so many times managers are thrown into a, the management role um, because somebody left, because something happened, they just get thrown in there. And the only thing they know is the way they've been tra trained and, and taught, which a lot of times is not always the best way. This is Eric Waffholm. Eric Waffholm is the president and founder of Eric Waffholm International and the author of the book, uh, Continuous Sales Improvement, that we showed earlier. And Eric has taught, uh, trained on the top stages of the world. Um, he has worked with Les Brown, Dr. Donald Moyne, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Gerber, Jay Abraham. And this is the stage, the get motivated stage, where Zig Ziglar used to talk when he was with us. So Eric is very well known, and um, he's my partner on this project here for sales managers. He's going to be deeply involved with this as we lay out the thing. Uh, two outcomes that I want to do today. I want to share a couple of great sales management tips that you uh, can take right now, practical application, take right now and apply them. 
uh, understand them, <laughs> metabolize them, research them, do whatever you want with them, but they can increase your effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, the other one is to invite you to participate in a one-year management program, advanced training with Eric and I. Um, I'm going to take the lead on it, but we will lock arms, work together, hand in hand, and the results, I'm going to share with you a couple of results here in just a moment, but the results on working with us are going to transform you, your business, your people in the way you operate, in the way you train, the way you manage. So we're, I'm jacked up and excited about what this will do for you. That's how confident I am because it's, it's proven. It's a proven system of, of training and managing um, in the sales space that it, it's not guesswork. It, it's, it's a done deal. Okay. Here's my vision for you to become the top, top sales manager in your industry or whatever your vision is. I want to embrace your vision and want to work with you hand in hand over the next 12 months uh, through trainings, through masterminds, through one-on-one -on -one coaching and really get into the nitty gritty of where you want to go, what you're doing now, and what we can put into place that will immediately transform. And the results that we've gotten in the past are huge. Um, the return on investment with this program is, is massive. And these are skills that you'll be able to take for the rest of your life. So you pay once and you've got the skills for the rest of your life, the rest of your career. So the exponential return on investment is un un measurable because it for me it's been worth millions so let's uh, see what it can do for you so here's my question what if we helped you do two things first of all create a vision for your team as a whole and then create a vision for each member of your team and put pieces in place that make it happen okay we want to create an entirely new possibility for the manager that you can become think about that you're at where you are, wherever you're at. If you're earning seven figures now, that's great. Let, let's let's up, up level you. If you're earning six figures, let's up level you. If you're not there yet, let's get you in that class. That's what's possible <laughs> with where we've come from, what we're going to share. And again, we'll get into the itinerary here, a little bit of it as we go through. So here's a couple of sales management tips. Let's start with one of them. First one is mindset. Now we hear it, you know, it's, it's almost rhetorical. It's almost overused, but... Gosh, it's so critical. <clears throat> what are you thinking about? What is your team thinking about? Are they bringing their, their problems to work? And one of the, the sales management teams that I ran was a door-to-door -door sales team. And we were selling a, a contractor for the largest cable company in the United States. And uh, we were resellers. And we went door-to-door. -door. And in a short period of time, I was able, from ground zero, was able to recruit, train, develop, manage the largest producing door-to-door -door sales team in the country. And one of the key things was what they brought to work with them, what they brought on the job with them. And our philosophy was we all got problems. We all have got distractions. We've all got things going on, creditors, family, uh, familial, spousal, whatever. We've all got challenges and problems. You got to leave them in the car. And for you, figure out a way to leave them, leave them away from the workplace. It's been very difficult this last 12 months, uh, actually 20 months, because many people are working from home. But the philosophy is still there. You've got your, your life has got to stay away from as much as possible, particularly your problems, from your work environment. Because here's what, what we found, is that in your presentation, whether it's door-to-door, face-to-face, -door, -face, or whether it's virtual, or whether it's on the phone, the client on the other side, the prospect on the other end, on the other side of that conversation, they can hear, see, and feel any tension, stress, or negativity that's coming through your presentation. They can feel it. They can actually hear you smile. When you're on the phone with somebody, they can, they can hear you smiling. If you're not smiling, they can hear that you're, you're in a bad mood or you're not, you're not there. They, they understand the inflections. They can hear it and see it. So I told my guy, my team, Leave your challenges in the car. When you get when you get done with work, listen, they're going to be there waiting for you. But you've got to flip that switch because if you take that excess baggage to your to your client, uh, it, it, you're putting yourself at a major disadvantage. So you're not being able to to give it your your best deal, and they can see it. Like I said, so here's the validation. 
38% of the decision to buy is determined by the salesperson, not the price product or the company. So if you don't have your sales, your mindset and their mindset in the right place when they're uh, doing their presentation, they're, they're, they're uh, prospecting or they're doing uh, sales presentations to get clients, <laughs> you're leaving uh, more than one third of your, your money on the table, one third of your sales on the table. This is a huge number. This wasn't, this is not just me saying it. This is HR Chally Research Company that found this out through, through a massive study. So this is a big deal. So mindset, it's not just rhetorical. It's not just mundane. It's not just repetitive. It's critical to your business and your success and your team's success. Okay, they, they, they need to understand. This. So these are one of the things that we really hone in on, on, on mindset. So here's a couple of critical places to, uh, to be successful as a sales manager. Company-centric mentality, okay? Emotionally focused, become an optimist, know that it's going to work, balanced lifestyle. So not only do we want to keep as many of your personal problems away from the workplace, we want to encourage you to keep your work challenges, problems, and distractions away from your family. Because, I mean, you could talk to your spouse about your business, nothing wrong with that, but the problems and challenges, you don't want to take that when you're trying to play ball with your kid. You don't want to, I'm not telling you how to be a parent. That's the last thing I'm trying to do, but I'm trying to, when, when you're at home, be at home. When you're at work, be at work. So it, it goes both ways. So let's talk about that. When we talk about the first one, company-centric mentality. So for me, when, when I'm working with a company, and when I've ever worked with a company, if I wasn't all in, it was a distraction. My people were distracted. My recruiting went down. My sales went down. What do I mean by all in? We well, don't want to have one foot in the door and one foot out the door. When your business is not going well, you, you, you shouldn't, in my opinion, you shouldn't be out there looking for another job. You should be getting all in on, on what you're doing. Believe in the product. Get emotionally tied to the product. Do you, do you believe in your product and service that you're offering? If you don't, that's a, that's a challenge. That, it's another conversation, but that's a challenge. So having that company-centric mentality, not only for you, but for your team, they've got to believe in the product and service that they're selling. If they don't believe in it and have some kind of emotional tie to what they've got, see, for us, it was easy. When you're with the number one um, cable company in the, in the country, and they, in the area that we were working, they had the, the highest tech uh, product available. It was the best product available at the price that we were offering it. Uh, it's easy to be confident about that in our presentation because we were coming from a position of strength and confidence. And we knew our competition. They were good in other things, but as a whole, we were the best uh, available and it came through in our presentation. So for your team, collaborating together, you coaching them. This again, are they all in? And building a team strength, a unity with your team, okay? For the company, <clears throat> do your team's values align? So in most companies, there's different teams. So for us, we had the installation team. We didn't do the installation. We did the sales, and then we turned it over to the company to do the installations, and another team went out there and did the installation. Well, we ran into a challenge one time. We went into an area with our team, and our sales blew up. They exploded. We sold more in a one-week period than we had in any two- or three-week period in the past. <laughs> and, and as independent contractors, we only got paid when the product was installed not when we sold it and turned it in. Our sales reps only got paid when it was installed. So the challenge we had was, is that that particular area, we blew up the sales, but they couldn't get them installed fast enough. And we lost 40% of the sales that we wrote. It was devastating to our team. It was devastating to our morale. It was devastating to our, to our psyche. And of course, our, our bottom line, our sales. So you got to make sure that your team's aligned is the delivery, the shipping department, the delivery department, the recruiting department, the install department, are all the departments in your company, do they align with each other so that you're all moving in the right direction, they, you're working together. It's not us against them. In, in the situation where we were in, we were so frustrated. We, we felt like it was us against them. We felt that they, were, they did it on purpose. And of course, that wasn't the case. So are you proud, you and your team, proud of the business that you're in? You kind of touched on that on the, uh, the buy-in. <clears throat> are they all in? Do you love your career? 
And do they love their career? And what do I mean by love? Again, that emotional attachment. Uh, for me, I love teaching. I love training. I love um, managing through leadership and, and changing people's lives. I, I love it. And it comes across in my presentation. It comes across in my delivery. It comes across in, in my performance. And the results uh, are proof in the pudding. Okay. Uh, what about your product? See, here's one of the things that I found. And my girlfriend works for a factory. And um, even when I was working at the restaurant, people punch a time clock or they are supposed to be, let's say in real estate, supposed to be on the floor from 12 to five. And in a 100% in a, in a commission-based position, it's not as critical as what I'm gonna share with you right now. But as a manager of, of salespeople that make a salary or get a draw, it's important that they treat their time like the company's time. It's important that they treat the product and services like it's theirs. They treat it like their money. Another way to put it is, are they stealing time? When they punch the clock, are they going to work? Are they taking 10 minutes extra on their break? Are they punching in late five minutes every single day? Stealing time like that or punching in late or coming in late and expecting to be paid for the whole time, that is stealing. You're stealing time. The company's paying you for your time. Again, 100% sales commission, when you're in that situation, you're, you're stealing from yourself. So there's a little difference there. However, in the, in the cable industry, we were uh, subcontractors. However, the orders had to be right. If we added on an extra DVR or extra HBO or extra something and, and the customer didn't actually get it, we expected to get paid, that, that's, that's treating it not like it's, it's our money. We're, 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 we're challenging it. We're, we're not playing a fair game. So treat your company and your product and your time like it's the company's, like it's your money. Treat the company's money like it's your money. Have that philosophy, that mindset. Uh, invest in the product. Uh, again, we talked about that emotional investment and be a customer of your product. So if you're selling Fords, you should be driving Fords. If you're selling, unless you're on a used car lot, that's a little bit different, but you should use the product that you're selling. So if you're going to sell a car, you should drive it around the block to make sure it works, make sure there's nothing wrong with it before you go out there and sell it. Skincare, you should be using the skincare, hair care, body care, body lotions, whatever it is, nutritional supplements. If you're not taking the nutritional supplements that you're promoting and selling, it puts you at a disadvantage. So these are the, these are the things that are critical and important, not just for you, but for you to impress upon your team. Okay, let's move on. Here's another tip, maximizing talent, bringing the best out of your team. Let me share with you a story. Uh, young, a guy that I, that one of my team, teammates, uh, guys that I brought on, his name is Mike Martin. In 2008, he owned a car lot. Well, we all know what happened in 2008, 2009. The market collapsed and uh, the financial market collapsed and they had that uh, cars for clunkers and that basically put him out of business. He sold his business, got whatever he could for it. He started working with me a very short period of time. Within a month or two, he showed the skills, sales skills to become a manager because he had that experience coming from the car industry where he had managed other people. With me, his first year, he made $108,000. And he told me, he said, listen, for the last three years, I hadn't made any money. I've been putting money back into it. He held on as long as he could. He went through the whole cash for clunkers thinking it would be a fast deal, went right through. And I think he joined me in 2010. Um, the next six years, from uh, 2011 to 2016, made over a million dollars. He's still in that industry. Uh, now he's his own contractor, and he's now made over $2 million in the last 10 years um, from the skills, the, the training that, that he got from me. This is Mike right here. As we took a trip to Boston, we, we had an amazing team here in the Detroit area. We went to Boston, started building a team in Boston to diversify and spread out and grow. And um, him and I went out there and had a great time, but we worked and we built a team there as well. So this is Mike. Um, and let's go back to maximizing talent. Again, same, same uh, thing here. Why do you want to maximize your talent? Why is that important? Your team's talent. Why is it important? Because if, you're, if you don't know what their strengths are through communication, if you don't know what their weaknesses are, if you don't know where they need to, to where they can excel at, if you don't know what that is, this is affecting 
again, the 38% of the, the people that make a decision because they're buying from their salesperson. Their salesperson's got to sell themselves. They've got to show the, the knowledge. Why, why would that customer buy from me? So let's talk about that. Strategy is critical to successfully managing talent. Have a strategy. You should have a strategy. You should, your team should know the strategy. And here's some of the things. Growing your sales, using a strategy, continuous sales improvement. What's your strategy on that? What's your strategy on continuing education? Are you training them? Are they improving their skills? So are they good at prospecting or are they better at closing? Are they better at prospecting or just okay at closing? So what does that equate to? Continuing education, your team-wide growth. If you get them all in the same, same program or same thought process or same training, you're training them all together, you start sharing a language. You have a shared language. So when you say something that is slang for your industry, everybody knows it. You talk about a one leg sell. Everybody should know what one legger is. If you don't, then, then that may not be your business model or, or whatever, but you should all, that, that shared language, that's part of the strategy. Here's some other parts of the strategy. Let me show you. Awareness. This increases your conversion rate. Discovery. Increase the average sale. Evaluation could drive larger sales. Now, let me talk to you about this for a second. I uh, got a tremendous uh, lesson from Jay Abraham. Now, if you don't know who Jay is, uh, he's probably the foremost intelligent marketing mind in the world right now. He's been around for decades and he works with the, the top trainers in, in the world and the top companies in the world, Fortune 100 companies, the, and he's uh, obviously a multimillionaire uh, because he's an expert at what he does. Now, Jay, Jay taught me Three things, and not three things. He taught me this one concept that I've been training on for decades. I learned this 30 years ago when I was going through my learning process, going from cook to, to sales. He said, there's three ways to grow any business, just three. And he said, one, get more customers, prospect. Two, get more customers, get the customers that you get to buy more. So you increase the average size of the sale. This is really um, uh, easy to understand in the restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, you order, order your dinner. After dinner, what do they usually do? They bring around a tray of desserts, they increase the ticket size, the desserts, so that increase the ticket. Why? Because the servers usually get paid on the um, amount of the bill, 15%, 10%, 20%, depending on how good the service was. That's where they get their tips, which is a huge part of their income. Another way to explain it, you go to a hamburger place. So you guys said like a uh, hamburger. What did, what did they usually say? Would you like to supersize that? Would you like to make that a combination, add fries and a drink to it? Why? They only make so much money on the hamburger. And it's very little. But when you upsize it to a drink, um, a soda drink and a fry, the profit on that is huge astronomical the profit on the sale increases 60 to 70 percent because um that's the profit margin on soda it's 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 massive so that's where they make their money it's the same thing with the movie theater they could give away the movie tickets for free they make the money on the popcorn the concession that's where they make most of their money is on that um so increasing the size of your sale next next way the third way is to get your clients to order more often so if you have them order more often, helping them increase their business by getting the products that they need, want, and desire that are going to be useful, not sitting on the shelf, will I get them to order more often, get a higher turnover of the products. In. So that's what I learned from Jay. So how can you implement that and understand that in your business and in your team? Okay. So when we were going door to door selling cable, our upsell was, would you like HBO? Would you like um, Cinemax? Would you like uh, stars or encore would you like an extra uh, extra box for the garage a digital box for the garage would you like one for the room in the basement so we up upsold them into equipment and features uh, because it increased our commission based on their sales okay uh, increasing sales in the pipeline this is really really important um, and these again these are the strategies if you have a strategy in place pipeline in my business in my world is critical if we're not continually putting people in the pipeline, we get nothing coming out the bottom because not everybody's ready to buy now. 
So that pipeline is important to keep pe people putting in like a funnel, like you see here on the screen, putting people in there at different levels of the process so that you can get sales up the bottom. Okay. So what do I want to do? I'm going to teach you how to coach your team to greatness. That's what we want to do here at, at um, um, Sales Management Mastery. Okay. Your sales reps have the ability to get better. I know it. You know it. And they probably know. If they don't know it, then they're, they're, they're not seeing the big picture. In my opinion, everybody, I can get better. Everybody can get better. And it's, it's important to stay in that conversation of continuous sales improvement, continuous sales management improvement, because you can continue to get better. Here's another one of my sales reps, Tim Kerrigan. Tim, he talked fast. <clears throat> he, and, and I didn't find out till later the reason he talked fast. I told him he wouldn't be any good because he talked so fast. People couldn't understand him. But he, he was stutter. He had a stutter and I didn't know it. And that's why he talked so fast to overcome that speech impediment. Now he came to me in his forties. He had a heart attack. He's under a tremendous amount of stress. He's drinking, smoking, broke, depressed, was married, not in the best position. Again, 2008, 2009, the financial market collapsed. He found himself out of work and uh, came on board. I took him out with me, showed him exactly what we were doing. And and um, he told me later on that he walked away, scratched his head and said, man, if this guy can do it, I'm going to, I'm going to get rich. Uh, that's what he was saying about me. And I was, I was doing extremely well at the time. And, and, uh, and I told him, I said, listen, I don't think this business is for you. He goes, why not? That's because you talk too fast. People aren't going to trust you. They're not going to understand you. You're the epitome of the fast talking door to door salesman. And he proved me wrong. Worked with me for seven years, uh, earned over 750,000 went on his own. He's now earned, actually, it's closer to 2 million now. Uh, he's got his own contract. He does business in Chicago. He's got an agreement with, um, with another uh, service with the real estate industry, where as soon as somebody moves in, <coughs> they, um, they change all the utilities and he gets a piece of that. So Tim is doing extremely well. Here's a picture of Tim. I couldn't get the picture any smaller, but uh, here's Tim. Um, now he's in his 50s, just became a grandfather. We, we have lunch every couple of months together, still in touch with both Mike and Tim. And uh, it's exciting to, to watch the transformation. And obviously, they appreciate the fact that um, I took him under my wing. And again, that's what we want to do with, with you. So here's a little bit about me. I, told you, I grew up in the family restaurant business. Um, at 26, I left. And that's when I got involved in the sales industry. And I had the privilege of being trained by John and Susan Peterson, Jim Fulbert, Mark Hughes, Larry Thompson, and the late, great Jim Rohn. Um, spent uh, three years working under Jim Rohn in this environment, the other people there, six years. And, um, and then I, I left them in the 90s. In the 90s, I actually took what I learned from them and started earning over 100000 a month. Uh, went again, that was, we're talking six and a half years in my seventh year, I went from making 17,000 a year as a restaurant manager to earning over a hundred thousand a month in the sales industry. And I was instrumental. I'm not saying this to impress you. This isn't about me. It's about you I'm saying this to impress upon you that I've got a formula. I know what it takes. I know the disciplines and the tactics and strategies <clears throat> that you can transform your business, yourself and your team to excel and get the most out of them. So I was uh, instrumental in recruiting, training, and managing what has since become one of the largest direct selling organizations in the world. They're still in business today, doing over 3 billion a year in over 20 some countries. In 2006 to 2018, I mentioned already recruited, trained, and managed the largest producing door-to-door -door sales team in the country. So it was in two different industries, had the privilege and blessings to take the knowledge that I learned and, and, and put it in play and make it work, not just for me, but for those other people that have made millions since. So who's this for? This is for any sales manager, vice president of sales, sales leader who has the desire to get better. So just ask yourself, do you have the desire to get better? If you say, well, I'm getting better on my own, that, that may be true. But for me, I wanted to compress time. And, and I was extremely successful at that. Again, six and a half, seven years, going from 17,000 a year to over a million a year. That's compressing time. And the only way I was able to do that was to learn from other people's experiences. I had to do the work. I had to pay the price. I had to get the disciplines in place. 
and their plan helped me to get my mind right to do it. And that's what I want to share with you. I'm looking for 20 people who'd like to become elite at what they do. Elite, level up in business, level up in income. 20 people, we're going to cap it at 20. You'll have the skills and ideas that you'll learn for the rest of your life. So what I teach you, what I what we talked about earlier, is you have a lifetime return on investment in the program. What I teach you, you have for the rest of your life, just like I do now, just like I was able to take from the direct selling industry into the uh, door, door, door to door industry and repeat my success. I learned it in the 80s and 90s, and I was able to, I'm still able to apply it for the rest of my career in uh, teaching it to other people. You get the benefits of joining. Here's some of them becoming the best manager you can possibly become. Tremendous job security, because the better you get, the more your company wants to keep you. You'll have an increase of income, especially if you get an override off your team, off the production. If you don't, their production goes up, the company's production goes up, you, you generally get a, a bonus on the end of the year. You'll have improved, tremendously improved relationships with your team. They will, uh, you'll get them to work more, harder, better, smarter, and they'll love you for it. You're not going to be cracking the whip. You're going to be embracing their strengths and talents. And you get tremendous recognition from everybody around you, not just your boss, but everybody around you. What's included? <clears throat> you get two 30 to 60 minute training sessions per month on Tuesdays, 12 noon Pacific time. This is going to be every month. We're going to get together as a group, everybody in the program. As we build up to 20, we get everybody in the program. Uh, we're going to meet on a, a virtual Zoom twice a month. And we've got the, I've already put together the training modules, the topics, we'll go over in just a second here what some of the topics are. You'll see what the itinerary has been working on it for a couple of months and it's coming together incredibly well. Once a month we'll do, I'm sorry, once a quarter, we'll do a three hour group mastermind with all the managers in the group. And we'll be able to, you know, this, this philosophy was really taught, trained and, and um, opened up by Napoleon Hill, the writer of Think and Grow Rich, the mastermind philosophy. And um, I'm part of a mastermind, two masterminds right now. And it's amazing because the growth in those masterminds, again, it speeds everything up, it compresses time. And we'll do this with our team, three hours um, a month. I'm sorry, a quarter. Uh, you'll get four one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me. That's one 60 to 90 minute um, coaching session a quarter. So every quarter, you and I will get together. I'm available throughout the time. You don't have to wait. If you got a question, I'll be available. You get four advanced how to be a great sales coach. Those are classes with international sales trainer, Eric Waffle. So you're going to get that as well. And then there's some other things that are <clears throat> that we throw in there along the way. But these are the key components of what this is going to be. I also have an opportunity as a sales manager to be a guest on my uh, national, international ex exposure um, uh, podcast. So you can be a guest on my podcast if you haven't already, that's available to you. So here's what we're doing is building the most premier sales management training community in the world. We've got a private Facebook group. We've got a public Facebook group just for our sales managers advanced training. So that's going to be continually growing in uh, giving content. Here's some of the content we're going to be covering in the next 12 months. These are the best practices for recruiting <clears throat> hiring, training, and sometimes recruiting and hiring is the same, but I, I've done both um, cold recruiting for the direct selling industry and also hiring, uh, training, which is critical. Um, and there's a, there's a formula with training that so many people miss. And this, this one formula alone is worth the cost of the entire program. Uh, retention, keeping your people. Once you train them, they're going to be so valuable other companies are going to want to get them. So we're going to show you how to keep them, the retention, um, being a sales coach. So <clears throat> being a sales coach is different than being a manager. Being a sales coach, you build that trust and rapport with your salespeople that they embrace tremendously. It, it shows that you care. They feel that you really care at a deep level. Uh, strategic planning, leading effective sales meetings, time management. And we hear so much cliche time management, but time management is one of the backbones to success. If you can't manage your time, how are you going to manage your team? If you can't manage your time, how are you going to manage their time? If you, can't, if you don't have a plan in place and you're just winging it, when you wing it, you get winging results. 
So we put the time plan management plan in place for you and so much more. Get 18 um, right now critical management topics and all that we discuss over the 12 months. So this is this is just so, so action packed, so content packed. And by the way, you'll have the recordings that you can go back and forth for the rest of your life. Um, here's we go. Bonus, every member of your team, they'll receive the protege program, the silver protege program, which includes sales training course, 12 training modules on the basics of the fundamentals of sales, taking a client from prospecting all the way through the process of handling objections to the uh, transitioning into the close and closing and follow up. They get that. That, uh, that also comes with a weekly sales training by Eric Lawholm International. Certification test. They're certified protege uh, members once they, finish the, once they finish the 12 modules. And this value in this is 2990 for 10 reps. So it's $299 a rep. That's the, val the values. Actually, that's what we sell it at. The values over a thousand for each one. So the value is 10 grand. We uh, give it to you. So we're giving it to you, um, which we're retailing right now at two ninety nine. So that's what we give to you. What's the investment? What does this cost me? Thousand dollars a month for twelve months. At the end of the twelve months, you're a member of our community, the Facebook group, the weekly content. You'll still have access to the the files in our program. Anything new we come out with, any because there's always something new going on. Just look at the last twenty months when the whole world shifted to virtual virtual sales trainings and virtual selling. Um, who knows what's going to come out, come out next with all the technology that's screaming around us. So you'll have a lifetime membership to that, but the um, coaching is, is just for one year, but it's a thousand bucks a month for 12 months. If you want to pay all at once, get two months free, it's 10,000 bucks. And uh, that'll lock you in to have the knowledge and the skills for the rest of your life. Ideas about payment, I'm sure you can figure this out, but you pay all of it yourself. You pay half, your company pays half, or a lot of companies, they pay for their, their managers to stay in the conversation to get better because they know that it's going to translate in the company getting better. So we can have that conversation. You can have that conversation with your HR department or your upper level, unless, of course, you are the guy. Um, but it's a company expense, and it's a tax write-off at any level here because you're investing in yourself. Here's why I feel the reason to join, because it compresses time to make you better. So there's, um, there's a philosophy out there that we pay a car payment, get a new car. Once we get a job, we get a new car and start making $500 car payments or lease payments, or we get a, buy a house, you know, we get a 30 year, sign up for a 30 year mortgage and we start making payments on a house. If you think about it strategically and logically, wouldn't it be better to invest money in yourself to get better, to increase your income exponentially? And once you solidify that, then you can go buy the car that you want. So which brings up the question, are you buying the car that you want or the car that you can afford? Are you buying the house that you want or the house that you can afford? Are you buying the clothes that you want or the clothes that you can afford? So by investing in yourself, you get better for life. So that's a, a one-time investment here. So I want to help you become the best you can possibly become. Do you want to become the best you possibly can become? That's a question for you. So to request an interview for to be part of this, because we want to make sure that you are a right fit. Uh, I'm not going to sell you something that, <laughs> that is not a right fit for you. So call me or text me. Uh, 248-521-5490. Yeah, it's, I'm at Eastern time. You can also email me, harry at ericlawfilm.com, and I will uh, reach out to you. Let me know the best time to reach you. And uh, let's talk. Let's talk for 10, 15 minutes. Find out if, uh, if, this, if this program is right for you. If it is, again, it'll change your life forever, just like it did Mike, Tim, and Dan, Stephen. I had seven guys uh, making 100000 a year knocking on doors selling cable. It was crazy. They were driving Mercedes and BMWs and, you know, their friends were asking them, people that, that they met and asked them, what do you do for a living? They say, I, I go door to door selling cable. They go, no, no, really. What do you do for a living? <laughs> no, I go, you make that kind of money going door to door? We did. We, we did tremendous. Uh, and it was exciting. And the skills that we learned, again, they have them for the rest of their life. And Mike and Tim, they're still in the industry doing well. 
If you uh, text me in the next 10 minutes, request an interview, do it on the honor system. Uh, once the book is available, I'll send you a signed copy of Eric's book. That's part of the book. I got mine, mine signed right here by Eric. We'll make sure you get a signed copy of Eric's book. And uh, that's, a, that's a bonus if you request an interview in the next 10 minutes. With that, stop sharing. I just want to say one more time that I appreciate you, you logging on today. Appreciate you listening in. Um, I know what I can do and you know, definitely want to change your life with the knowledge, content, and information that has changed my life. It's taken me from cook, the international trainer, and a coach. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.